Hey everybody, AmpRepairGuy.com, 203-892-4119. Today we have a Kenwood TL922A in for repair. I have another one that needs a bunch of work also on the other side of the bench. So I'm going to go over everything it needs, or at least everything I see right now, and then I'll cover anything that I missed in the last video when it's completed. So, needs new plate current meter. Luckily, I have a stock one here. This one is open. So, customer changed the filter caps at some point and uh, put in a hardbox kit. Just wanted to tell people, I've said this before, they used good capacitors. So, unless one fails, you don't have to change it. I don't know if I didn't ask him, you know, why he changed them, but I'm just saying in general. I think I've worked on over almost 800 of these so far and out of all of those I've only had to change the capacitors in two of them so so don't change them unless they need to be changed so I disconnected the leads off the capacitor bank and put some heat shrink on them so I could test it to make sure the filament transformer was okay which it is and Anyway, so I noticed that one of the screws that backed out, and I'll show you, you can get a better view of it when I flip it up on its side, and a lot of the solder connections, it's a double-sided board, um, you know, the solder connections were not made on the outer side of the board. So this will have to come out so I can tighten all the screws, and actually I'll pull the board off and check the solder joints on the other side. It's very important to have a solid connection, uh, for each resistor that's in parallel with the capacitor because if you if one of these resistors were to open you'll lose that cap because you'll have more voltage across that cap they not only act like bleeder resistors but they're equalization resistors so they equalize the voltage across each capacitor that they're in parallel with so the air variable capacitors look okay for the plate and the load he did this setup with the LEDs. I'm going to pull all that out and redo it. A lot of bad solder joints. I have a wire here that I had a piece of electrical tape on it just touching it and, you know, could have touched the metering circuit. I mean, then another piece of wire over here. He had THHN or THN, whatever, stranded house wire to lengthen one of the wires. And it was connected to the cap bank over here. Again, electrical tape on it. So I'm going to redo all that as a makeshift soft start and pull that out. It's not needed. The transformers are wound to limit the amount of inrush. So, huh, okay, so I'm going to I'll flip it over and I'll show you the bottom. Be right back. Okay, so grids were not grounded well. See, solder joints barely soldered over here. You don't want to use wire. I see a lot of people using wire You're supposed to use strap. I go from each grid connection directly to these posts here. One here, one here, one here. So pull all that out, redo that. I'll add the strap over here. So as a better connection between the plate two and air variable cap and the tube grid. So that'll increase the stability. Uh, someone did the 10 meter modification. They put a couple caps in series. I'll pull those out and then put one cap in per side. Someone put a different zener in. It's the wrong value. So I'll pull that out. I'll change the electrolytic cap over here. So you can see bad solder joint connections over here for the, uh, for the soft start wires. And I'll touch these up too. So here's one. Here's that house wire. Like glopped on right there, and uh, he trunk he he trunk the wiring, and uh, I'll have to go through all that. Got a couple wires over here, so I'm gonna undo all that, put it back to stock, do the bias modification, check the SO239 connectors, band switch looks okay, and then I want to show you this right here. See the screw? Kind of hard to see. See that screw's backed out with the capacitor, and then the B positive connection, it's not even soldered. It was just stuck in there. So, please, you know, I, 
I like um, I like seeing people trying to do work, but please just you know if you're not 100% confident, please just let me do it. it. Just adds more time and increases the price. So, but I'm going to go through this and I'm going to make it better than new. So, please stay tuned. And it's getting a set of Pentalabs tubes. There's the thing here, the wires. No, they were. All right, so I'll see you guys soon. 73. I'm going to show some of the steps to this because it's so much work, just so you can get, you viewers can get an idea of how labor intensive this is. So I took this board out right here. Resistor's blown apart, plus I have to get the meter out, so I will uh, fix that and also. Do what I got to do here, and I'll uh, I'll be back. See you soon. Okay, the meter movements are out. Comes out as an assembly. Very tedious work. Have to be really careful not to break any connections down below. So I have a donor amp here. It was just totally destroyed. Took the meters out of that. Tested them. They test good. I'm going to put that whole assembly back in. There's a guy who sells a replacement, but does not look as good as the stock one. If you can't get a stock one, I guess that's what you have to use. Basically just to use as a Chinese meter movement and he takes the backing plate out and he Xeroxed it and glues it in against the one that comes with the Chinese one. But problem is, it's not the exact depth. So uh, he doesn't state that you have to actually modify this bracket assembly because the terminals will hit this metal right here so that's something I figured out when I installed it um, one time I've only had to re this is the second one I've had to replace the meter on usually they they don't go uh, this guy did a bunch of stuff to his and you know, there's no meter protection stock but normally it doesn't the, the meter usually doesn't fry like that you know so um, when I'm done with it it'll have meter protection okay so I'm gonna get back to work I have to carefully reinstall the meters and then the bracket assembly back in and just redo it all just very very time consuming so see you guys soon okay so the new meters have been installed replacement board installed everything soldered really well and it's all zip tied so I'll remove this jumper lead so I've got the filter cap assembly out you can see the screw that backed out I'm gonna Take the board off, check the solder joints in the back, take a measurement of all the resistors, make sure they're all good. Retighten all, you know, reinstall the caps, tighten them really well, reinstall it. So this ends up taking twice the time. You know, when I have to undo something and then redo it, you know, it just adds up to more time. So, so I'm gonna get to that and I'll be back when it's reinstalled. See you soon. Okay, I removed the capacitors, resistors test okay, you can see there are some points he did not solder, so also on this side, so I'm going to go over all of the solder joints, install the capacitors, and uh, continue on, see you guys soon. Okay, so it's all back together. Replaced a couple of the tabs. One had snapped and he had soldered it, and the other one, when I bent it, it snapped right off. So everything's all soldered real nice. Screws are super tight now. So I removed the jumper going from the board, the rectifier board, up to the feed through. And I noticed that the Terminal, terminal here is really loose, so he must have damaged the solder joint on the other side, so I'm going to try to fix that. Well, I have to fix it, but I'm going to try to heat it up and and uh, see if I can flow some solder through it to the other side. But uh, that's another first, but you know, he took the board out and he probably put stress on it. I'm not the board, I'm sorry. When he took the f filter cap assembly out, he probably put stress on it. Remember, that lead was not soldered. It was just going through the terminal on the filter cap assembly. So I have to add the, the disc cap over here. So that has not been installed yet. And I have it here on my workbench, but I'll show you that in the next video. See you soon. So I didn't have any success 
I had to pull the board out. First time out of over 700 I've seen someone do this. So you can see how the that solid conductor goes through and it solders to the trace over here and you can see it is loose. I'm going to have to fix that. And I also noticed that he or someone that worked on it prior damaged one of the ceramic disc caps. Probably hit it with his soldering iron when he was in there. So, let me get to work and then reinstall it. See you guys soon. Okay, so I fixed the board, placed the cap, cut a new piece of copper, solid copper wire, and actually went through the hole soldered to that part of the trace and it extended it beyond that. So now it's good. So I'm going to reinstall this. First time ever I've had to do this. Ever. <laughs> so I'll put it back in. See you soon. Okay, so we're back with the completed Kenwood TL922 and you're going to get to see it work. There's so much work that had to be done to this thing. Figured you know, there's probably a lot of people like, oh my gosh, did it ever work? You know, I usually shoot a video for the customer and I send it to them direct of it in operation on one band of their choice. I tested on all of the bands that the amp operates on, this one, 160 through 10. So, you know, these bands, 160, 80, 40, 20, 15, and 10. So, I'm going to go over everything I did. So, I ended up replacing the board because the resistor blew apart and the trace was damaged underneath so I just swapped out the whole board, resoldered everything new zip ties, the zip tie everything real nice, brand new meter lamp bulbs, cleaned everything up took the whole filter cap board assembly out I showed that in one of the other videos so everything's all set on that put a new bypass cap in series glitch resistor in boards in there, the rectifier board that's all set. Put the strap in over here. Zip tied the wiring. Took that soft start out. The meter actually had, the multimeter had a open wire on the negative side that goes to ground. The conductor was actually broken inside the lead. I'm like, why isn't this working? So I started checking everything, checking everything, and then I started checking the wiring. So that's been fixed. That's good. So I'm going to flip it over, show you the bottom. Then I'll plug the tubes in and fire it up. I'll get to see it work. Okay, be right back. Okay, so I'm back here with the bottom. I grounded the grids the right way with copper strap. I did the self bias modification. As I said before, I removed the soft start and I re soldered the line wires to the fuse holders. Put in the proper Zener diode, rated for the proper amount of voltage, so now he has the proper amount of static plate current. Replace the diode. Zip tied everything real nice. Still need to change this electrolytic. I'm waiting for some to arrive tomorrow or the next day. But that one's good for now, but I always swap it out. Change the two mica caps. There were two in series per side, so now I have the proper value. One per select in coil. Clean the output rotary switch with deoxic gold. Clean the input rotary switch with deoxic gold. Install the strap over here. So the plate tune air variable capacitor has a better connection to the area where the tube grids are connected. And that's about it. So take a look at it. So I'm going to plug the tubes in and fire it up. I will also clean the contacts on the TR relay over here and the relay over here. So, and check the SO239 connectors, they're good. So, so I'm going to put the tubes in, tune it up, and then I'll show it making some watts. So, stay tuned. I want to show one other thing here. I replaced the high voltage wire going to the rectifier board. I have some really flexible silicone type wire with a stranded silver plated center conductor. So, and solder to the tab. Okay, right. so, see you soon. Okay, so the customer wanted the video taken on 15 meters. So it's on 15 meters, higher voltage setting, it's already tuned up. 2500 watt slug, meters on PEP, 
Yesu FT, what is this? I forget. 950. <laughs> Set to about uh, like 69 watts according to the meter on the front. I'm going to go ahead and key the radio. Hello, 1212. Hello, I'll show the frequency after. Audio hello, audio hello, audio hello. That's like 1250 right there. Audio hello, hello, hello. Put on RF. Audio hello. Current. Audio hello. Tit, 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 tit. Audio tit, 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 tit. Working as it should. Oh, go ahead and show the frequency. So, that's it. This thing was a lot of work. I'm glad it is finally done, and I have another one that needs a whole bunch of work, and then I have more amps on the way. So, if you need an amplifier repaired, feel free to give me a call. Phone number is 203-892-4119. The website is amprepairguy.com. Please like, share, and subscribe. And yeah, I'm going to clean my bench. <laughs> so, let me shut this off. I always forget to shut that off, and then batteries go dead after a while. I finally took the LED out that helps <laughs> helps them last a bit longer. But um, anyway, so please feel free to give me a call. Thanks for watching and like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate it. 73.